Hey everyone, Doug Klutz here, and today I want to talk about a topic that I get questions about all the time, and that pertains to the field of forensic psychology. And before we go any further, I want to say that anybody interested in this field of forensic psychology needs to be able to separate fact from fiction. There are a lot of fictional depictions of this field, a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies that get people interested in the field of forensic psychology. A lot of times these, these TV shows and these movies refer to it as criminal psychology or criminal profiling, for example. And I always tell students, be careful because you never want to base any career decision on some type of fictional depiction. And just for an example, you know, you talk about the, this fictional label of a criminal profiler per se, and I have a lot of students that come to me and say, I want to be a criminal profiler for the FBI because that's what all these TV shows focus on. If you go to the FBI's website, fbi.gov, and you go under the tab of their most frequently asked questions, they actually have a, a point on there towards the end of the list where they get asked all the time, you know, how do I become a profiler with the FBI? And they say on there, we do not have a position called profiler within the FBI. So uh, we have to be able to separate fact from fiction because if you go with these fictional depictions and you base career decisions and career planning off of them, it's going to lead to very frustrating results. So the real field, again, is called forensic psychology. Um, it's, it's really an offshoot of, of the broader field of clinical psychology. And with clinical psychology, we have different offshoots, like, for example, forensic psychology. Uh, there's child psychology, uh, gero psychology, a lot of different branches there, um, but we're talking about forensic psychology. So ultimately, the, the training that you're going to want to pursue in order to get some of the most desirable jobs out there in this field will be uh, either a Ph.D., in forensic psychology or a PsyD. Now, now PhD stands for Doctor of Philosophy, a PsyD stands for Doctor of Psychology. There's a lot of debate between these two degrees. That's for a whole nother video topic, but I'm going to provide you in the description portion of this video below um, with a link for a great resource in this broad field of clinical psychology. It's called Student Doctor Network. And they have a subforum uh, pertaining to this, this field of clinical psychology. And you'll see a lot of threads on there with forensic psychology. And there are a lot of threads specifically dedicated to this great debate between a, a PhD and a PsyD. And again, it's a very contentious topic, uh, but I'll let you research that a little further. Maybe I'll post a video down the road uh, giving some thoughts between those two programs. But the, the ultimate point is, after your undergraduate degree you're going to have to go through a lot of advanced uh, educational training in order to be qualified for these really desirable jobs in this field of forensic psychology. You're looking at about five to six years on top of your undergraduate degree. So that's the biggest drawback with this field is the time commitment. It's kind of like running a marathon. But after you're done with that marathon, you can have a lot of gainful employment opportunities in this field of forensic psychology. Uh, you can teach at a college or university, you can research, you can work for maybe a state secure medical uh, facility, an academic medical uh, center. Uh, you could work, for example, with the federal government in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. The BOP employs a lot of clinical psychologists that specialize in the subfield of forensic psychology. So lots of employment opportunities. You can even become your own boss one day once you have enough experience and open up your own private practice. Uh, it's a good field in looking at job prospects. This field is always hiring. States, different states are always hiring. The federal government's always hiring uh, forensic psychologists. But there is a lengthy time commitment there. And there are not too many really good competitive uh, PhD and PsyD programs out there. Uh, the pickings are somewhat limited. Uh, this, this forum, Student Doctor Network, uh, will go over that in a lot of detail. It's a very good resource to check out where you have students in, in your situation that are planning ahead for the future. You have current graduate students on that forum. You have real-world practitioners that have gone through the whole process. So lots of good information on Student Doctor Network. Be sure to check it out. This field requires a lot of planning ahead while you're an undergraduate student. Ultimately, in your undergraduate career, in order to be competitive for the next step, the next step being either getting into one of these really highly competitive PhD programs or PsyD programs, you're going to need to obviously keep up your grades in your undergraduate career. 
uh, you're going to want to really put an emphasis on obtaining undergraduate research. Joining a research lab, uh, preferably with a forensic psychology faculty member who has a research lab, who has research going on, trying to get immersed in that lab, and, and we're talking about you know freshman, sophomore year ideally, uh, definitely no later than junior year as far as gaining this experience, because while you're in this undergraduate research lab, you're going to want to try to uh, get as much research experience as possible and hopefully even publish some, get some publications under your belt, even if it's like second, third, or fourth author, still uh, trying to get at least a couple publications on that resume. Attend a research conference in the field. Uh, do what's called a poster presentation. Present your research there. It's a great networking opportunity. But again, it also looks great on your resume. You're going to need that type of undergraduate research experience in order to be competitive for these PhD and PsyD programs. It's a must. And obviously, again, you have to keep your GPA up. You need to be majoring in psychology. Uh, a lot of students will say, you know, do I need to double major? Do I need to minor in something specifically? I've, I've seen students double major in psychology and criminal justice. I've seen students double major in, in psychology and Spanish. Um, that, that Spanish language experience can be very marketable in your future, looking at, at some really desirable jobs out there. In fact, I've even heard some some current forensic psychologists say they, they wish they would have become proficient in Spanish because some of the job ads that they saw, uh, you know, asked for proficiency in Spanish. So think about that. But the, the must in there is the, the major in psychology. That's what you have to have. And you have to do well in your psychology coursework. And the other point that I would really stress in preparing yourself for this really competitive field of forensic psychology, start studying for the GRE early the graduate record examination, because that's going to be a make or break point when it comes to interviewing against really competitive applicants from other schools and other programs. Uh, they're going to have great GRE scores. So the earlier that you start preparing, the better. Even if like you're a freshman or sophomore and you do two GRE practice problems a day, and after a month maybe build that up to three and four, you'll be very familiar with how the GRE feels, what the questions feel like, when it comes time to take the real thing. So again, undergraduate research experience is the, the most important. Having a great GRE score is, is probably the second most important component. And then of course, keeping up your, your GPA would be kind of tied for second there uh, in that order. So hopefully that, that shed some light as far as some of the, the different careers that are out there in, in forensic psychology, what you can do with that type of degree, uh, how to get there, how to start preparing yourself. But again, just look at it like a marathon. It's not going to be quick, but again, in order to get the really desirable jobs in this field, you have to go on to get a PhD or a PsyD. Uh, you have to have that kind of advanced training. Uh, just stopping at a master's degree in this field, you're, you're not going to have a ton of gainful employment opportunities out there, unfortunately. And, and you're not going to have any of these employment opportunities out there with just a bachelor's degree in psychology because these, these jobs require advanced clinical supervision and clinical placements and you have to get all that kind of experience. So anyways, uh, check out Student Doctor Network. Kind of let that be your next step if you're interested in this field and contact a faculty member in a forensic psychology program at your school in order to start getting immersed in this undergraduate research. And, and sometimes it will be called you know, forensic psychology. I've seen some programs call it psych and law, um, but you'll get the idea as far as this, this broader field of, of forensic psychology. So hopefully this helped, and, and good luck with this endeavor if you choose this career path, and talk to you soon. Take care.